Here is a small town in Jordan called Dibon. In 1868, a basalt stone tablet was found here, called the Meshastili, or the Moabite stone. It contains the record of wars in 850 BC between Mesha, king of Moab, and Israel's king Omri, as well as his son, King Ahab. It also mentions the name of the Moabites' idol, Chemosh, ten times. Regarding the Moabites, based on Genesis 19, they had a blood relationship with the Israelites as descendants of Abraham's nephew, Lot. This tablet witnessed the close yet hostile relationship between the Israelites and the Moabites. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab. Head north across the plateau of Moab, then cross the Arnon River. Get down from the plateau, 400 meters below sea level to the valley. They would have had to cross the Jordan River from its east bank, through the bushes in the riverbed, cut through Jericho. Climb up onto the rugged Judea wilderness and walk there for 30 kilometers to reach a mountainous terrain 700 meters high and get to their destination, Bethlehem. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. When they both returned to Bethlehem, it was at the beginning of the barley harvest. It was the harvesting season, and many wheat fields were being reaped. Ruth, chapter 2, verse 3, said that on her first day, Ruth happened to come to the field that belonged to a rich man named Boaz, who happened to be a close relative of Naomi. Those coincidences showed that God, in fact, took special care of Ruth by leading her to Boaz's field. Now here is your kinsman, Boaz, with whose young woman you have been working. See, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Now wash and anoint yourself and put on your best clothes and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. Here's the historic site of the city gate of Dan. We can see that there was a square in front of the city gate. No sooner had Boaz gone up to the gate and sat down there, than the next of kin, of whom Boaz had spoken, came passing by. So Boaz said, Come over, friend. Sit down here. And he went over and sat down. Then Boaz took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit down here. So they sat down. Boaz started with land redemption. Boaz reminded him he would also have to marry Ruth the Moabitess. The next of kin changed his mind. The next of kin took off his sandal and gave it to Boaz. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. When they came together, the Lord made her conceive and she bore a son. They named him Obed. This is a high place where the kings of the northern kingdom of Israel sacrificed to a golden calf. In 1993 to 94, a monument was discovered here. It was carved around 9th century BC, recording the wars between King Hazael of Aram and the kings of Israel and the house of David. Outside the Bible, this is the earliest record of the name of David. In the final chapter of the book of Ruth, the last paragraph is the genealogy of King David. It lists Boaz of Obed, Obed of Jesse, and Jesse of David. So Boaz and Ruth were the great-grandparents of King David. The Messiah God prepared for the world was a descendant of King David 
as he became flesh born to the world. The last genealogy in the Bible is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, recorded in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke in the New Testament. They reflect the same genealogical tradition as that in Ruth. Including Ruth in the Bible had a deeper meaning and significance. Ruth symbolized the converted Gentiles who abandoned idolatry and knew the one true God revealed through his chosen people, the Israelites. The accounts of Ruth's redemption by Boaz and their marriage lead us to realize that God has included his chosen people, the Israelites, as well as the Gentiles in his salvation plan for mankind.